Hello and welcome everyone to Let's Play Tomb Raider 4 The Last Revelation, this is 115 speaking. It's been a wee bit over two years since I finished The Lost Artifact and since then I've made a commitment to also do a completionist kind of Let's Play of Tomb Raider 4. Now this game has a very, very special place in my heart. I will still remember the times when I was going through PC magazines back in 1998 and 99. And there were some previews of Tomb Raider 4 being released and happening exclusively in Egypt. And this was quite exciting to me because at the time I have only played Tomb Raider 3. I never had experienced the Egyptian levels in Tomb Raider 1. And uh, I was something like an aficionado, a hobbyist when it came to ancient Egypt as a kid. I, <laughs> I guess I still am to this day. So really, it's going to be a special treat. And uh, I... You know, while I don't think it's quite as difficult as Tomb Raider 3, I think uh, it's the trickiest Tomb Raider in the franchise to complete without a guide or a walkthrough. I would even claim it's not entirely possible to complete the game. I'm not even talking about finding all the secrets, right? So, you know, if you're one of the people who have actually completed it without a guide and I pretty much just discredited you, no, know, I, I really apologize. It's just... Ah, you'll see what I mean. It is so utterly ridiculously difficult to figure out the next steps, but once you know what to do, it's one of the most enjoyable ones. So, uh, kind of in the vein of my previous Let's Plays of the previous Tomb Raider entries, my objective here will be to not only show you how to complete the game, but of course how to find all the secrets, how to and where to find all the items, and how to kill or destroy or indirectly cause the death of as many enemies as possible. Now, Tomb Raider 4 will be somewhat of a nightmare for me as a completionist because this is really the game in the franchise where, uh, you know, collecting kills and hunting for everything that moves is no longer really possible. There will be some enemies that will be invincible and you will have to avoid and some enemies you will sort of have to trick or imprison or trap but not really kill so in this regard my approach really had to be a bit updated when it comes to interpreting what is considered a completionist or what isn't and nevertheless my commitment still is to show you how many enemies can you actually kill out of the total number of enemies we will encounter now, unlike in the previous entries, I unfortunately will not be starting with the Croft Manor, or Lara's home as it was called in the uh, core era Tomb Raider, simply because this is the first game in the entry where they decided to cut it, and I think it also shows that by now um, core design were really under a lot of pressure, you know, delivering a game on an annual basis, and especially Tomb Raider 4 was kind of the game which really refreshed and revisited and updated a lot of things. Uh, going from Tomb Raider 3 to 4 is about as big a gap as going from Tomb Raider 1 to 2. So there are quite a lot of improvements. Unfortunately, the Croft Manor was not really carried over. Instead, what we'll get to do is we'll get to play two tutorial levels, which are a big point of criticism because they're not really skippable. But, you know, for the purposes of our Let's Play, um, we would play them even if they were optional. So, and and these actually two tutorial levels, uh, they have some secrets which count towards the total number of secrets found statistic uh, in the entire game. So, all the more incentive to play them, and all the more reason for me to <laughs> shut up and jump into the game.
And so, we breach the sanctum of the ancients, the first footfalls in this tomb for centuries. This place gives me the creeps after you. I don't know what it is about reaching the sanctum of the ancients in 1980s Cambodia, but it feels pretty damn good. So let me welcome you to the game world and we actually get to play as young Galara. For those of you who know the game, this is not a surprise, but it's always such a treat because, you know, while she's lacking in any kind of weaponry, uh, she doesn't lack in her witty replies. <laughs> So these uh, two levels in Cambodia will serve as a bit of a tutorial and there's Von Croy, the guy who took Lara on his uh, expedition across Asia and uh, their relationship is something that's going to be really nicely explored through a couple of in-game cutscenes across the game and also across the next one. And it's something, it's a bit of a complicated relationship. They kind of despise and hate but also care for each other. It's just really, really interesting. There's a lot, there's just a large amount of jealousy Von Croy feels towards Lara being um, better at things than he is, you know, and old experienced archaeologists and who the hell does this little brat think she is? <laughs> so it's gonna be quite the treat, you know, uh, exploring their relationship a little. And the good thing is that most of their interactions, you know, in case you're replaying the game or have been, for whatever reason, going through these moments uh, quite a few times uh, recently, you can skip them using the look key. But before I get to actually explaining the controls, let me first explain the menu system. So pressing the escape key leads us to the inventory, right? And it's quite the big change from uh, Tomb Raider 1, 2 and 3. While you can still scroll left and right uh, in a... well, you can imagine it's a ring of an inventory. Uh, it doesn't quite feel as good as it did and also you can't really reach the upper and the lower ring of the inventory All you can do here is scroll left and right and sort of everything you can access are the actual supplies You pick up along the way. So we start with three small health packs These replenish half our health and one large health pack which replenishes our entire health So considering you can only use them when alive you will always waste a small amount, but still it's nice if you don't want to bother with popping the small ones too often. And on top of that we find ourselves with these two mysterious stone tablets. So unlike Lara's passport and unfortunately she will not get her passport even when we'll play adult Lara, that's not the case, it's replaced by the safe and load tablets, um, we can use these basically to load or save a game. So let me just demonstrate that. No, no. And Lara just says no. no, as if you're trying to use a key item. By the way, funny thing, if you try to load a game from the main menu, Lara will also say no, but in a much higher pitched voice. You should try that, it's pretty damn funny. And we can use the tablet over here to, of course, save. Now, this is exclusive to the PC version, but the PC version will keep a track of how many saves you have made on a given save file. The PS1 version does not do that. But thankfully, you can save freely even in the PS1 version large improvement from Tomb Raider 3. I think the developers really listened to the fan feedback, which is a good thing, so you're free to experiment. And for those of you who have played Tomb Raider 1, you will see our familiar companion, the Compass. It's not strictly an item you can access in the ring or pick up anywhere in the game world, it's more like part of the interface if you press your inventory key. And there it is. So wherever the uh, red arrow pointer is showing, that's the direction we are facing. So we are facing south, and if we just turn around, we are suddenly facing north. It's as easy as that. There it is. West and east. And let's do an absolute mindfuck. <gasps> Northeast. See, it works like a charm. So you can really use this if you feel like drawing maps or something. And it's um, also useful if you're reading some written walkthrough. So not watching a let's play or video walkthrough like mine. Uh, the authors of these guides often included... Uh, the directions using the compass so you know exactly what they're talking about and uh, that's a bit of a shout out to you Stella and your <laughs> awesome guides well not just awesome the best ones out there okay so again uh, this level will consist of us uh, walking up to Von Croy obeying his instructions being the experienced guy and he will also teach us how to control Lara uh, to an extent I, I feel like he does a much poorer job of it than uh, Lara herself did in Lara's home uh, the Croft Manor mention levels. So I'm also going to use this opportunity to not only talk a lot as I'm doing right now but to explain some really core movements. So first of all 
the tank controls, right? So you can pretty much, going left and right, you can tilt Lara in the direction you want, and pressing forward you will make her run, pressing backwards you will make her hop. Now, there is a logic and rhyme and reason behind the different distances Lara covers with each movement like this, and we'll get to that later. But in case you feel like strafing, you can either assign hotkeys, or you can press the shift key in one of the directions. So rather than tilting, Lara will instead strafe, right? Now, if you do feel like changing any of the controls, uh, you might also be wondering how the hell do we return to the main menu or exit the game? And I remember when we played this with my brother back when it was released, we didn't know how to quit the game because, well, Lara's passport isn't in the inventory. How do you exit? And we didn't know about the old F4 uh, keyboard shortcut to close the main application that's running. So we actually used to restart our PC to leave the game. <laughs> Talk about brute force. Instead, on PC version, the default key binding is P. And you get to the pause screen, right? Who would imagine pause screen would ever be useful? <laughs> I mean, th this is really kind of a 1990s era still. I mean, the game was released in 1999. But uh, this is useful for two reasons. So one, you can go to exit to title and from that title screen you can of course exit the game itself or you can check the options. Now this is something I didn't show in the main menu yet so I'm going to do it here. You can even see my control configuration and it might seem a bit weird but it makes sense on the particular keyboard layout I'm playing on my laptop. So I have crawl, sh uh, sprint or dash as they call it keys and flare keys quite close together, there's the shift, alt, jump, action, control, draw weapons, space, use flare, also a certain binding, then we have the look key, the roll, the inventory and the strafing that I mentioned. So again, movements that I will explore in this level further, and if you want to change them you can do that here, it's a much better interface actually than in the previous three games. You can also customize the music and SFX volume, these are the settings I used for my recording purposes, so yours will differ undoubtedly and the sound quality of course high and targeting automatic. It's quite problematic to play the game with um, with manual targeting so I'd really recommend doing this and just using the look key to cycle across different targets but combat is not something we're gonna do anytime soon. And finally what's the most important to me as a completionist and <laughs> something I make specialized videos about the statistics. So. Uh, this is a point where Tomb Raider 3 is a bit of a disappointment because, uh, again, Tomb Raider 1 had the best statistics. It showed you the secrets, the kills and items, everything that matters, right? Uh, Tomb Raider 4 unfortunately doesn't even show you the kills anymore. It only shows secrets. It doesn't show the items, it shows the health packs you used, the ammunition you used, the distance you traveled and the time taken. So all these things I really appreciate, but I would also like to see the items picked up and the kills count. So I've decided I'm going to manually put them in to the game uh, in my videos. So towards the end of each level, you'll see me just pausing the game and showing you the statistics screen because unlike in previous three games, the game doesn't even show you the stat screen when you finish a level, right? There's another reason for that and that, that's the game, the game isn't entirely linear. You will be jumping in and out of levels freely, it's only separated by loading screens, so it makes a bit more sense. Nevertheless, I'm gonna put in my own statistics just to make it a bit easier for you to track your own progress in case you're interested in uh, one of the categories like me. Okay. And also just to remind yourself what the name of the level is. Alrighty then. So, we know the very, very basic controls. So, you know, <laughs> Von Croy has been standing there this entire time waving for Lara to come closer. So, how about we do just that? Careful. All is not as it seems. Concealed traps and pitfalls await the unwary. You must stay close and follow my instruction. Yeah, stay close and follow his instructions. Or not, entirely up to us. I am actually gonna try and stay as close as possible and follow his instructions to the letter. Because uh, you can easily miss some of the unique dialogue exchanges they have uh, between themselves. And I kind of want you to be able to experience all of them. So. That's the thing. Now, you might have already noticed it, for those of you who are more keen-eyed, but first of all, skeleton, really cool. Maybe even the first one Lara has ever seen, no? And um, maybe something the skeleton was after, back when he or she was alive, a golden skull. Now, the secret chime is a bit different, but it's still unmistakably 
the secret chime. Now, if we look into the inventory screen, we will see golden skull, right? Now, what is it? What use does it have? None. Well, none. But if we go back to the statistics screen, you will see secrets found. One out of 70. And, you know, if you're a Tomb Raider veteran and you are playing Tomb Raider for, for the first time, you'll be thinking there are 70 secrets to find in the first level. No, this is a counter for the entire game. This is not Tomb Raider Underworld with 30 secrets in each level, okay? <laughs> so don't worry about that. And again, I'm going to include this at the end of each level and actually even uh, during the um, intro slides for each level. So you know in advance what you should be on the lookout for. Okay, and we'll actually be trying to collect all eight of these skulls in this level. Okay, less talking. Let's follow Von Croy a little. Good men have died for the information contained herein, and cruel men have bartered the information for their own ends. For this we must respect it. We will not deviate from its route, and you will not deviate from my instruction. This way. Well, that was a sudden mood swing, and interesting how much he'll change his opinion on deviating from warnings. Anyway, as he said, this way, and uh, this is important, let Von Croy do his thing, interact with the mysterious switch over there, because if you want, you will die. See? So he sort of prematurely triggered this mechanism to make sure that you have a safe passage through these spikes. So he's actually a really helpful companion in a way. And also he's been paid a lot of money by Lara's father, so... The yeah. first obstacle, a small hop to test your, how do you say, pluck. Press and hold, walk. Now, push forward. I'm not familiar with the word he used. To test your flag, did he say? What was that word? No idea. Anyway, following his instructions, he said press and hold walk and then push forward. Walk is the shift key in my case. So this makes Lara move very, very, very slowly. Come, come, child. Do not fear. This is merely an appetizer for the bearers ahead. Push forward and jump together. Um, see... I'm not really sure if that's such a good idea, no. <laughs> uh, but I didn't even have a chance to explain what walking does, so let me demonstrate that. Um, if you press the walk key and you move forward, Lara will automatically stop, right? Same goes for strafing. Lara will not fall whilst strafing. She will tilt herself to align with the remaining square. And the same thing about walking back. She will just stop. So this is a so-called safety walk. Uh, one of the uses is, of course, not to fall down into deadly pits. The other use is to safely maneuver across certain kinds of spikes, not the spikes we just went through, they were too tall. Anyway, uh, I'm often using the look key, and uh, that is because it helps me highlight an important point. If you follow Von Croy's instructions to the letter, you will miss out on important things, and I actually think he knows that bastard. I think he does this intentionally. Now, if you do not hold uh, the uh, walking key and just press forward, Lara will fall. In, in this case, thankfully, it was a very safe fall. Now, as you can see, the tank controls are especially bad in high water that Lara has to wait through. So again, you can till her, you can move, you can actually even strafe when you're submerged in water like this, but the movement is very slow, of course. But again, press the control key, and you will have found another golden skull, that's two of them. And again, if you look into the statistics screen, we have found two of them. So, pretty much exploring in this level rewards you, uh, even though it annoys Von Croy, but actually that's like an extra bonus in this case. And cool effect, uh, water drops are actually falling from Lara's body. Ah, this was so neat, I remember this being mentioned in one of the PC magazines. <laughs> well, back to Von Croy's instructions, let me introduce you to jumping. So, for those of you new to Tomb Raider, uh, you can even see the whole world is split into a couple of squares, right? And certain directions make you cover certain parts of those squares, right? So, for example, if we walk to the edge, we have a square behind us, if you tap backwards, that's it. You cover almost the entire square. If you go forwards, it's a little bit less. Again, moving forwards covers this much, moving backwards covers about twice as much. So, it's all about um, calculating where you want to be at any one point. Now, Von Croy introduces us to jumping, or hopping, as he referred to it. So, in case you press the jump key, Lara does this. Not very useful on its own, at least not in this situation. But if you press jump and then forward, 
Lara will hop forward. If you press jump and then backward, this is what happens. If you press jump and right, and left, simple, right? So, uh, and we, with each of these jumps, you might have noticed Lara covers about one and a half square, right? These are the so-called standing jumps. And the reason why we call them standing jumps is not that there will be sitting jumps, it's that there will also be running jumps to cover more distance a bit later on. But for the time being, let's just jump forward. It's really as simple as that, and we landed at the end of this square. It really helps that the world is, uh, you know, composed of these blocks. Makes the game a bit more predictable and easier to master, so to speak. And there's our first enemy of the game! Oh my god, truly terrifying foe! Um, he seems to have it in for Von Croy. Well, that's good, at least not for us. Okay, he hit him with his knife once. Come on, finish the job. Von Croy, what is my father paying you for? There we go. So this is the point I mentioned in the, back in the main menu. There will be a number of enemies we encounter in this game that we will not be able to kill. We'll have someone else like Von Croy kill them, or some friendly allies, or some environmental hazards. But the advantage of this is that um, I'm no longer going to have to worry about explosive uh, glitch when it comes to kill counts, so we're gonna have some fun with explosive weapons later on. Uh, anyway, when you encounter obstacles like this that just, you know, don't seem particularly high, you can just press the control key and Lara will climb them like that, right? So, jumping doesn't really work like this, you know, but if you just hold the control key, Lara will do it. Of course, uh, you can try and jump forward and Lara will reach it, because each time she does a standing jump, Lara tilts a bit forward, just by the smallest amount. If you do a couple of jumps like that, you will find yourself further and further in the square. Actually, we are... We're, look, we are almost in the middle of the square, right? Another thing you can do, of course, is just hopping forward like this. And, you know, e even using a different direction, so to speak. So, really, the choice is up to you, but um, there's something about the sound she makes when... Hop! <laughs> it's really cute. I, I love it. Okay. Patience, child. Disrespect is a route to carelessness. Our route lays beyond the stream. Well, okay, I guess. I I'm not sure what to say to that, Von Croy. Let's try and get closer. I'm sure he'll just stop us in our tracks again. This gap is wider. Of course. And the edge is treacherous. First walk to the edge. Then press forward and jump together. When you are in mid-air, press and hold action. You will grab the outcrop. So, we will grab the outcrop. Okay, okay, I got it. Easy peasy. So, what we know by now is that we can sort of hop forward, but this will not be quite enough to cover the entire distance. So, what Von Kroy suggested was that we also use the action key. So just like interacting with objects or vaulting over small obstacles, we can also use it Hold action and press up. to do exactly what he said. Hold action and press up. If I let go of action at this point, Lara will let go and fall down there, okay? See? Just like that. And yeah, there are a couple of these pointless pulls, but as you can see, action can also be used to overcome a bit higher obstacles. So instead of saying hop, Lara says double hop, ho hop, something weird like that. It's again very cute. So instead, what we're gonna do differently this time is uh, we're gonna grab the edge, and I'm also gonna show you what you can do when you're hanging onto the ledge. It must look pretty embarrassing to Von Croy, but Lara knows exactly what she's doing. Come on. So hold. And now you can actually strafe. You can move left, you can move right, you can do even a nasty trick like this. <laughs> this is really great. This is something Tomb Raider players across the globe have been desiring since the first game and Tomb Raider 4 finally makes it possible. Now unfortunately it's not as useful as you might think because they built the levels around us not being able to exploit this too much. But still, it's just good to have this additional degree of freedom. Now, whilst holding the control key you can either climb up or you can do something way cooler. Hold the walk key and then press forward. So now we are holding both action, the walk key, so control and shift in my case, and also press forward. There we go. What a show of Lara. You can still use the look button. <laughs> ah, 
pace is quickening now, yeah? One more crossing, child. Or do you wish to stop for tea? Oh, I think I can just about hold it together. Wouldn't want to spill it on your nice suit, at any rate. I love Lara so much. Okay. <laughs> She's great. So let's wait for Vonkro to do his thing and then he'll have another... This one calls for a run -up. I will <clears> first. Um, another nugget of wisdom, I was about to say. Run up. So this is what I referred to as running jump before. Be right. careful now, child. We have little time for incompetence. Walk to the edge, then tap back to give yourself a run up. Vonkoro, I'm starting to feel a bit of a professional jealousy here. I'm the guy giving instructions here, not you. Please just shut it for, for a little while. Let's walk to the edge. Now, if we make another standing and grabbing jump, we are simply not going to make it. The gap is too much. See, it's actually three squares long. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so we need a run-up, but Lara makes very precise movements with her feet. How do we know how much run-up we need to make that perfect jump? And thankfully, it's very simple, and it's been very simple since times of Tomb Raider 1. Press backwards once. Now, press forward, and immediately press and hold jump. Now hold down action to grab onto the ledge. If you would stop interrupting me, please. And notice how Lara also tiffed, tilted to, you know, face Von Croy, which is a bit problematic because it might have just messed up our run-up a little. So it's entirely okay to reset and ideally without further interruptions. So again, let's do what he said. We'll make a running jump this time with the perfect run-up. It will also combine what we learned by holding the action key and grabbing the ledge. Ah, no further interruptions, Von Croy. Wonderful. Well, this time we are not going to show off, of course, because he's too far away. Now, we can follow him, but I have a much better idea. We are, after all, interested in all the secrets, am I right? Hold on a sec. Is this going to trigger another one? No, okay, he, he, he waits patiently. Seriously, I am so paranoid when it comes to Von Croy in this level. I just never know when the interactions are going to trigger. So let's slide down over here, and there we go. This is the third secret, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, or oh, we can, of course, check the school count. There is nothing in the beautiful pool over here, but, you know, I haven't even taken a moment to admire the scenery over here. I mean, just look at this. And we're gonna get a bit of a better view from uh, from the up top, so let's do that. But we can see some roofs of temples in the distance. They are terribly ro low resolution, but there's something charming about it. So those are trees, and within that blend of trees... Let me do running jump here, actually. We don't even need to grab the ledge. See? It's useful like that. Saves time. But there, uh, see? The three roofs, the, the towers, the domes over there. Oh. It's gorgeous. Now, mind you, I'm also going to try and commit to find an interesting um, Archaeology of Tomb Raider articles uh, for whatever will be currently relevant to the level we'll be playing. So I'm not going to find a link for each and every video, but if I'm going to find something on that amazing webpage, I'm definitely going to link it in the description in case you'd like to learn about the real-world inspiration behind some of these levels. That's always adding a bit more enjoyment to the mix. Okay, and it's as easy as that. And the sooner you get used to these jumps, the better. And actually, your jumping skills will be especially put to the test in the next level. But this is sort of like a stress-free, non-timed, safe environment to do it in. So let's follow the old geezer, see what he's up to. A useful crack, rendered by the hand of time, invisible to the untrained eye. You're a regular superhero, Werner. Ah, yes, the super man. There's enough comedy. That almost sounded like the voice actor commenting, not Von Croy. And what you can see over here is something I demonstrated before when we're grabbing the ledge over there. It's sort of shimmying to the side. So Von Croy does the exact same thing, and soon we'll find ourselves doing it. I'm actually not sure if he's faster or if Lara is faster when doing this. Let's see him climb up, actually. <laughs> it looks kind of funny. Imagine him dropping stuff from his backpack or something. Okay, seems he's quiet. I think the moment we climb up... No, nothing? Okay, fine. 
so you, you can actually there are two ways you can grab this right one of them is pressing the jump key and then action so Lara will grab otherwise Lara will just ignore it completely or a very useful shortcut is directly pressing forward and holding the control key and that's it right or you can let go now mind you it's too tight to climb into even using the crawl key so this is pretty much a crack usable just for shimmying that's it that's all it needs to be useful for Yeah, I think both Lara and Von Croy are equally as slow in this. Just the animation is a bit different. Now press forward to climb up. Yes, Von Croy, I was just about to do that. Uh, you can also shimmy and use the sort of cone traverser over there, but it leads to nothing. You will just slide back down, so there's no point in that. Okay, and let's enjoy a unique camera angle. Tomb Raider 4 loves this, and some of them are really non-interruptible, so you're gonna... This is a high fall. You should lower yourself down to be safe. Turn around to face away from the door. Now press back and hold action. Let go of action to fall to the floor. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Camera angle, so I could not see Von Croy's up ahead. I did not know he's gonna again rudely interrupt me. And see, the camera is fixed, and if you press the look button... <laughs> Lara's head is moving, but the camera isn't, right? It's funny like this. So again, there are many fixed camera angles you can do nothing about. Thankfully, most of them are harmless, but some are especially vicious. Anywho, let's do what he said. Wow, that's quite the distance. Again, I cannot use the look key, so I can't check exactly how deep it goes, but if we do what he said, that involves holding the action key while stepping backwards, and Lara will automatically grab it, right? And she can safely drop down. If you don't do it, she will again drop down, but in some cases this might result in you taking a little bit of damage. So that's why the advice was useful in the your first place. to earn your keep, Fräulein. The mechanism to activate the bridge lies at the other side of the stream. These rivers cascade through chambers and caverns deep below these prehistoric foothills. As a consequence... Freezing, I guess. The old gout playing up again, Werner. What's an old gout? What part of body is gout? Huh. I'd really like to know. Okay, now I'm paranoid. I think he's gonna talk again when we approach. Literally, my hands are shaking from this stress of him interrupting me over and over. In deep ah. pools, you can swim by pressing jump. Use the directions to navigate through the water. There may be artifacts, trinkets at the bed. So this is a funny exchange. Uh, he's basically telling Lara she has to go take a dive in the very freezing cold pool because she might find trinkets. I mean, she wasn't eager about it, but he's trying to lure her in. And um, as Slack would have it, do you see the golden trinket at the bottom of the pool? There it is. Now, we will take a deep dive and I will teach you a little bit about the controls underwater and whilst moving on the surface of the water. But the thing is, no matter if you pick it up and then resurface, or if you just resurface straight away, Lara will share her disappointment in Von Croy. Actually, let, let me show you what I mean by that. She, she will claim she found nothing even though she did. But first of all, we can just drop into the water, we can jump into the water, or we can swan dive into the water. So, um, rather than making a standard, you know, hop forward, or even backwards, we can do the same thing whilst also holding the walk key, the shift. And Lara will do a somersault like this. Now, if you're doing this into the water, this will result in a swan dive. It's really beautiful. And will make Lara go really deep. Now, once you're underwater, you can now... I actually really like swimming in Tomb Raider games because it feels more like flying when you think about it. Now, you might notice that when using backwards and upwards, you are tilting Lara. The same with sides. So, how do you make her move? The action? No, it's the jump key action. That's what really makes her swim. So you keep holding that and you keep tilting Lara in four different directions and that's pretty much what you can do underwater. There is another move that I'm going to teach you. Now, first of all, you can also use the look key, look further, and behind the bars over there we see two health packs. One large, one small one. We will get there soon enough. And over here we see another golden skull that I pointed out from above. All right. But, as you can see at the top right corner of the screen, we are running out of breath, so if you just keep swimming to the surface... Your average priceless seaweed. 
No prizes for you this time, Lara. Ah, well. Use forward and left and right to move across the surface until you reach the shore. Then press action to climb out. Your average priceless seaweed. So, I like to think Lara was actually lying because she doesn't want to tell Von Croy she found the golden skulls, you know? Like, she just wants to keep the treasure to herself. Otherwise, the dialogue doesn't make much sense. But, as Von Croy said, you know, this time around, it's a bit more like on the ground, meaning we finally are able to move forward without holding the jump key and backwards and tilt Lara with the tank controls, and we can also strafe, like this. Right? So, the same thing as... Uh, as on the surface but uh, when you press the jump key now you will go for another dive right and this is what we want to do because we want to get to those uh, health packs we've seen on the other side of the bus if you need a rebreather feel free to resurface here you know if you're a bit clumsy with the controls and if you hold the action key not just press it you need to hold it Lara will tilt herself automatically to pick these up very handy and now you can, of course, check that we received one small health pack and one large health pack, if you're not sure. Uh, again, listening to the fan feedback, the developers finally including uh, included the bottom right corner of the screen showing you what is it you actually picked up, something that was really missing from Tomb Raider 3. The theory was that because the objects were fully three-dimensional, but they managed to do it here even with three-dimensional objects, so that's really nice. And again, feel free to resurface. And, interesting thing, as you can see, we cannot climb over here. Lara simply doesn't have arms long enough to really grab that, so we need to find a shorter uh, surface to hold on to. So let's do just that. There we go. So these kinds of surfaces, there are actually two kinds you can climb. One is basically like this. This is as high as Lara can reach. And one is even lower, it's the same uh, level as the water surface. You can even find those kinds of surfaces. Both of them are climbable if you just hold forward and Look press the control key. Look or pressure pad. There must be one close by. When you find it, use action to activate it. Yes, as I was about to do, Von Croy. Thank you very much. Now, if you have are having, you know, like naughty thoughts about thinking of leaving the old geezer over there, and continuing down your own way, keep in mind the door over here can only be opened by a switch that only Von Croy can interact with. I'm not sure if this is uh, just his archaeological knowledge at play, or he has some trinket or gear that allows him to operate those, but you need him to continue, so uh, yeah, I'd like to think we're not doing this out of the goodness of our heart. And uh, yeah, so these levers are a new kind of thing to Tomb Raider, but what really annoys me is that can, they can only be interacted with from one direction. Know? So if you press control here, nothing happens. You always have to approach them from the direction where the pole is sticking out. And Lara will just push it. That's how to operate the mechanism. So this lowered the drawbridge. Von Croy can now move across it and he'll open the door for us. It's really as neat as that. Yeah, he's just using his hand, not really even his knife. Although he pulls out the knife each time. Interesting. Well, there we go. In time for another lesson, L let me just let him get ahead, because I don't want to interrupt a one, another one of his nuggets of wisdom. My god, I'm so nervous. And I often, you might have noticed, I often use the look key, and I'm very careful about not pressing it at the wrong moment, because this will skip the interaction with him, so, oh my god, I just want to play the game. You will catch your death in those clothes, my dear. A quick sprint up that ladder will dry you out again. Such concern. I never knew you cared. <laughs> Dear Lara, you are a valuable asset to the quest. You are romantic, you. <laughs> yes, quite. Again, the mumbling at the end of the sentence, like, ha ha ha, yes, quite. It seems like it's the voice actor, not even Von Croy. Very immersive, actually. I like it. Okay, you romantic, you. So, um, in order to dry our wet clothes, we'll climb the ladder. But very carefully. Walk up to the ladder. Now press and hold action to climb up onto it. Keep this button pressed and use forward to climb to the top. Yes, yeah, so remember how we grabbed the crevice crack through which we shimmy to the right to climb up? Again, you can either press the jump key and hold control, 
or just hold control and forward as a bit of a shortcut Lara will do that. Now you have to keep holding the action key for Lara to actually hold onto the ladder and you can either go down, you can go up and you can even go left and you can go right and all of these are actually very very useful moves we'll need to utilize all of them eventually and another really great thing you can do from a ladder is a backflip alright but first of all let's climb up yeah as long as you keep holding the action Lara will do there will that be another lever up there. pull it then get back down here quickly the quest is nearly at an end uh, it, it, it's not, to be honest, but I don't want to spoil too much. So yeah, again, we'll press it, it will lower another drawbridge. Again, you have to approach it from the direction of the ball. Can we do that again? With some you can, so I'm not sure about this one. Oh yeah, we can! Let's see if that raises the drawbridge again. Huh. Maybe I broke the game, that'd be fun. Anyway, you might be wondering how to climb down the ladders. You know, something that's very tricky, especially in first-person shooters. Here, it's very simple. You will do exactly the same kind of drop that you did before, the safety drop. You keep holding the action key, and Lara will automatically adjust to being in a ladder, rather than just holding down. Now, we have a couple of options. You can either keep holding down and release at the very end, or there is also a bit of a shortcut, and you can simply release and repress the control key. This is enormously useful for those long, long drops, whilst also keeping Lara safe, so something to keep in mind. And finally, there is one extremely useful and later on essential thing you can do on ladders, and um, I'm sort of wondering if, if I'll show it to you, we'll probably have to swim again, but I think it's worth it. I mean, this is the tutorial level where I really am taking my sweet time explaining all the core mechanics that I can. Uh, Lara will do a backflip if you press the jump key. There we go. And this is such an important move. It allows you to reach some otherwise unreachable platforms. Now, another thing, whilst we have some goddamn peace and quiet I want to introduce you to, is the roll. So here's the thing about roll. Uh, it's what we refer to when Lara does this. What is this? You, you might be wondering. So. Not only does Lara make a 180 degree turn, almost instantaneously, extremely useful in combat later on, but it also makes her dive forward one full square length. So what's the purpose exactly? Uh, let me demonstrate something as we will reach the ladder, okay? Ooh, sprint! I should not have spoiled that surprise yet, but if you play Tomb Raider 3 you know it's here, come on. <laughs> But remember how we made the safety drop or how we try to sort of um, re-grab the ladder over here? Well, um, you can use roll for that purpose. So, let's say you are uh, this distance in, yeah? And now if you hold the action key and press roll, you can basically quickly re-grab it. It's as simple as that. It's enormously useful. Now, another situation in which you can use a roll is if you jump forward, and press roll, Lara will end up landing in the other direction. Again, this is an essential move I've been using since Tomb Raider 2 in combat. And the same thing can be done if you hop backwards. And Lara will land end up facing forwards. Now, you can't actually do this when doing uh, side flips. I feel like that'd be a bit too much. I get it. That's fine. But if you think about the backflip we just did on the ladder, if you backflip now and press roll, Lara will do this, right? And this, again, will be an essential move later on in some especially tricky challenges. You'll have to make series of jumps like this, so the sooner you get comfortable with it, the better. And finally, the final feature overall, extremely useful underwater because of um, the breath time limitation, Lara can make an 180 degree turn in water. So let's say you're in a hurry, you're pressing a switch and you have to return. Rather than tilting Lara like this, you can just go and be on your way extremely useful. So, anyway, that's enough of me digressing, but again, if you need to Tomb Raider, these are absolutely essential moves. And uh, the good thing about Roll, <coughs> sorry, that I over the time got uh, accustomed to is that rather than assigning it to a particular hotkey, which you can also do, you can also make Lara Roll if you press forward and backwards. So, even if you're running, and you press backwards, Lara will do a roll. So you can combine these two directional keys to trigger it. This is very useful if you're um, 
you know, if you don't plan to use a roll, but in middle of action you just decide this might be a smart thing to do, as you're going forward just press backwards. And it's much closer to the finger than the actual roll button. So, <laughs> okay, I don't want to overwhelm you with information, but, um, you know, you'll, you'll eventually figure it out on your own. But these are, I feel, very useful advices. Swiftly across the vines now. Press jump, then hold down action to grab onto the bars. Yes, yeah, so I was kind of tempted to do that and get a head start, so we beat him to it, and it's entirely possible. But uh, Von Croy is still a bit faster, so you have to start much earlier than he does. But I'm instead going to take my sweet time explaining what is it we're about to do. So, this is uh, these are the sort of monkey bars Lara had installed in her gym at her home in Tomb Raider 3. So, this time you can't just press forward an action key, right, to grab it, because the game wouldn't know if you actually want to keep moving forward or if you want to grab up. So something like this you have to do by pressing the jump key and holding the control. Now press forward to swing across. Don't let go of action or you will again before the plunge. In other words, if you let go, Lara will drop into the pool and we'll have to swim and climb back. It's as simple as that. So don't worry, not gonna happen. But uh, as Monkor suggested, we can press forward to move forward. We can also press right or press left to tilt Lara. So these are very clumsy tank controls over here. I mean, it makes sense. She can't really use her leg. She has to move the entire weight of her body. What's a bit annoying is that you can't move backwards. I kind of get it, but I wish it would be possible. You can still use the look key. See Lara tilting her head. And of course, whenever comfortable, you can just let go. So let's move forward. And you can even tilt Lara as you are moving forward. This is very useful. Uh, often not necessary, but still. Now be very careful about tilting Lara too much to either of the edges, on the left or right, because if Lara will try to swing forward without having sufficient space, she might let go of it automatically and you might fall into the pool or, in worse situations, into your death and break Lara's neck. So be careful and try to stay in the middle. And now we can let go. Well, we could have earlier, but just want to see this to the end. Ha! Huh. See? Lara actually automatically let go. I wasn't releasing control key, so that's what I mean. Be careful about approaching the edges of uh, the monkey swings. Okay. Ah, finally some fresh air. I like the lightning effects here. And there's a wild boar over here, and he's not the only one. This is the third... Uh, sorry, the second, and behind the corner is the third enemy of this level. Now, both of them have it in for Lara. Von Croy, pull out your knife, please. Thank you. I'm gonna try and avoid these little guys, but... Uh, <laughs> they make such cute sounds, really. It feels kind of brutal to think that you would have to stab them with a huge knife. You know, they're still living, breathing animals. Okay, two strikes, Von Croy, come on. And mind you, in my videos, I will consider this zero out of three enemies killed, you know? I'm gonna try and count the number of enemies in this game, but also the number of kills Lara will manage to land the highest number imaginable and possible without, you know, having certain kinds of weapons early on via cheats and uh, maybe not counting environmental hazards or incapacitating rather than outright killing. It will make sense in later levels. Now, Von Croy, I would appreciate if you were to do something, not cut Lara's legs off, please. But as you can see, the boars really do minimal damage to Lara. See, it's just, it's just a hint of damage. I mean, if they do it 20 times, you're still gonna die, right? Oh, congratulations, you, you big strong man. I bet you feel really young now. Um, so, really, uh, this was... Uh, <laughs> this was not a good demonstration of the game's AI, and it's something that can be exploited on enemies later on. Ooh, a bit of a foreshadowing, maybe. Will Von Croy be our enemy? Who knows? And before you, you know, continue down the path, sick of this place, just keep in mind the Golden Skull over here. Now, I haven't really talked about it, I will a bit later on, but uh, there's a check at the end of the level if you found all secrets or if you uh, are missing even one or all of them. Uh, depending on which, it will uh, increase or decrease the difficulty of the end of this level and the next level. Just an interesting thing to keep in mind. But don't worry, I will show you both easy and hard varieties of each. Because I'll make a save, because I'm just wonderful like that. Anyway, let's follow him into the Dark Temple. 
I really admire how many unique textures they've used for these just two levels. You know, Kambodja is a tutorial, but they really didn't hold back when it came to just making the place feel very dead alive. It's really great stuff. Ah, look at these lion statues and the gong swinging above. This is great stuff. <laughs> They're so cute. I love them. Okay, well, nothing in this room in particular, but inside we will see a very unlucky adventurer. Yeah, now, if you're a Tomb Raider veteran, you might be just, you know, brazen and thinking, well, we can safely walk through spikes, right? And this is still the case in Tomb Raider 4 for spikes that are short and low around Lara's knee length. But spikes that are taller than Lara herself, you can't really safely walk through. So be very careful about not touching them and just mind the whip and the hat. I bet this guy thought he was going to be famous or something. I bet he was afraid of snakes and I bet he starred in four movies. Well, and I bet the movies had a lot of references to Obi-Wan Kenobi and Star Wars, yeah. But, well, unfortunately it didn't quite work out, he never became famous. Mind the column over here, Golden Skull. There we go, actually let me check the number, we should have six? Yes, good, we didn't miss anything, wonderful. There is no mention of this in the text. I fear this must be opened internally. We must enter through the grate and be wary of snares. I presume by we, you refer to me. Yeah, my heavier frame may activate traps. You will pass unnoticed. How convenient. Your heavier frame won't cry, really? And it's also interesting to see just how... Stand facing the grate. Now, press and hold the crouch button. Push forward to crawl into the gap. Be alert. I almost got a heart attack. I thought the game crashed. Okay, um... <sighs> you know how some games are really good at making you hate the villain? Not just because you're told you're supposed to hate them, but by the villain also mechanically inconveniencing you as a player? I feel like they did an outstanding job with Von Croy here. And I'm pretty sure it was not intentional. Whoa, okay. Fine, uh, so, as I was about to say, Von Croy doesn't seem to be a big fan of uh, improvisation. I mean, this was not in the text. What is this doing here? This should not be here. Lara, you fixed the problem because of my heavy frame. Oh, you bastard. But, if you have attention to detail, you will see another golden skull here. So, let me introduce you to another move. And this is something that Von Croy will very poorly try to explain. Crawling. So, uh, once you have the crawl key assigned, Lara will go, not into a crawl quite yet, but a crouch. Now, if we were to have guns or any kind of uh, light weapon, Lara would be able to draw it and we would be able to shoot from crouch through. Um, even small spaces like this, we could hit enemies, right? Now, that's not the case here, so what's the purpose? If you want to move whilst crouch, you have to go prone, and you can do that by pressing either forward or backward when you're in a crouch. So, press crouch, and I'll press either backward or forward, Lara will do exactly the same thing. This is me pressing backward, <laughs> and this is me pressing forward. Same, right? Now, you can also just tilt her before you do that, or once you do that, you can tilt her regardless, right? And this is pretty much to enable her to, to crawl into these spaces. Same, exactly the same as in Tomb Raider 3. Really nothing new here. But, uh, let me demonstrate on the secret to our left over here. Another golden skull. In order to pick up an object, you have to go into crouch and press the control, right? And Lara will only ever do this if she is above an object. So if you're in a tight space like this, you can't go into the crouch unless you press control over an object. So you press it twice and you end up picking it up. Just an interesting observation, I guess. Now this is where we really want to be. Oh.
Wasn't this just one of the most heartwarming cutscenes you've ever seen in this franchise? I mean, really. <laughs> Lara has absolutely no reverence for the dead. She sees a backpack, she wants to have it. She hopes it will bring her more luck than its previous owner. She doesn't even care about the artifact that dropped from the pedestal over here. Nor about triggering the mechanism, no. This girl has her priorities. And it's something really cute and I like what they did uh, in the games in 90s is that, you know, we played as a Lara model, the younger Lara without a backpack. Then she picked it up, started putting it on, and then using a simple camera trickery, they suddenly switched her into a backpack model, you know? So she didn't actually put it on, just two different Laras were swapped, giving the illusion she put it on, you know? <laughs> I love this kind of stuff. Okay, so again, we trigger the mechanism, open the door so Von Croy stops complaining. Don't worry, it doesn't kill you if you, you know, touch it or anything like that. Lara will just stop, almost if it's... Uh, it's a solid, unmovable object. And now, let's crawl out, but let's be careful not to crawl, crawl fully out, because Von Croy will have some thoughts to share. Ah, a backpack. Let us hope it does not hold the same luck for you as its previous owner. I make my own luck, Werner. What now? Oof, okay. This is one of those dialogues I always end up skipping because if you make just another step... Now it begins. The eyes of the ancients are upon us, and their vengeance is wrathful. We must move quickly. When running, press and hold sprint to gain extra speed. Right, uh, so he tells us to sprint here, but don't. Please, the instructions Von Croy gives are a complete and utter nonsense. Just go, go along, you know, enjoy the ride. Dive through the gap, dive through the gap. Press jump to perform a diving roll. <laughs> it's funny to watch him to run. Yeah, so again, um, the sprint bar is limited and uh, he didn't even mention you should, you know, do the dive while sprinting. So a couple of things to set straight. You can press the sprint key to make Lara sprint as long as the green energy bar lasts. You can just stop and Lara will stop kind of awkwardly into a normal run or you can let go of forward and keep holding the sprint key. This is enormously useful and why? Um, first of all it looks cool, let's be honest. Secondly it will stop you from falling into any kind of gap. So it's kind of same as walking towards an edge of a surface and unfortunately I don't have a surface where I could demonstrate this. But if you sprint and whoa, wanna stop, this is the way to do it. Just keep release forward and just keep holding the sprint key. It serves as a walk key in that case. Well, and finally, the absolutely coolest thing you can do to end sprinting is to dive through the gap as Von Croy said. Now, first of all, we can do something really smart. We can, of course, crawl underneath these darts so we don't get hit. But let me show you what happens if we do. Huh. There we go. <gasps> for a while I thought we are gonna get poisoned, but no, for some reason when you get hit by these, you get poisoned for like one second. It's a truly minimal damage. But when your health bar turns this shade, you need to use a health pack to avoid uh, poison taking hold over Lara and her health uh, just pretty much depleting it entirely. And basically every single health pack in the game is an antidote, small, large, it doesn't matter. So it's more of an annoyance than anything, but poison in Tomb Raider 4 has a very cool effect, so I'm kind of hoping that later on, once we do get properly poisoned, uh, I'm gonna be able to show you. Anyway, considering the minimal damage, we don't really need to crawl underneath these anymore, so let's sprint and uh, dive through the gap. Woohoo! That was fun, no? And there are a couple of traps in Tomb Raider 4 which, for which this particular dive is a really good way of avoiding them. So, I like that it finally has a use. In Tomb Raider 3, I don't think we ever found a single use for it other than to look cool. Which, don't get me wrong, that's a number one priority for Lara. Okay, he was a polite gentleman here waiting for us. Now, do not approach those stairs yet, okay? That's very important because uh, what you're gonna do in this room determines uh, the rest of the level and also the next level after it because over in this corner behind the cleverly concealing rail, 
we have golden skull. So what I'm gonna do here, because I wanna show you both alternatives, the easy or the hard, depending on where you're at in your own adventure, I'm going to make a save here. Now, again, there are two ways we can do about this. If you remember in the inventory, we have the very handy save tablet. We can pick any spot. Unfortunately, this is the total number of slots. So once you use all of these, you can't really scroll down for new ones. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a slot at the end of each level just to be able to revisit the stat screen and see what situation we were in in each and every level, okay? But right now, for the purposes of um, the difficulty change of the second level, I'm gonna make a save here before we pick up the final secret. So now you can see Angar Wat, on the left we have 001, number of saves, and on the right 37 minutes, 32 seconds, zero days. So it tracks the in-game time of how long your journey took, right? Now, we can also uh, reload, save like this, and we can also press F5 as a sort of quick save key, and uh, I'm not really sure where the... Ah, there it is, F6 as a quick load key, right? So, you know, you can do it via inventory, you can press the F5 and F6, unfortunately they can't be rebound, so sometimes you can by accident press save when you want to load, or load when you want to save, and that is truly infuriating. So I would still recommend doing it via the inventory screen, even though it takes a while longer. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I'm gonna first show you the easy path, and then I'm gonna show you the difficult path. So we have the save here, I'm gonna do it in the same order in the next level. So let's leave the secret there, and we're gonna choose the path of the righteous. The Garden of the Five Towers. To the right, the path of the heretical. To the left is the root of the virtuous. You know me, Werner. A regular virtuoso. He said, to the right is the path of the heretical, to the left the path of the virtuous. And yet he does the exact opposite. If he'll pick up the eighth secret, he'll <laughs> he'll choose this one, the path on the left. Yeah, it's just a bit strange like that. They didn't really thought this well out. Okay. Poncroy, you're taking your time, you can move a bit faster, come on, come on. I believe in you, and your creaky old knees. Whoa, this looks impressive. Now it becomes interesting, yeah? You see now, it is not for the weak of heart. How do you hold up, girl? Oh, I think I could get used to this. You might be wondering, get used to what exactly, and why is there a pool? Well, don't worry, everything will be explained. Ah, by me, not by him. door before us requires two people hmm. to open it. You go up to the alcove above the door, I will activate the switch down here. I do appreciate the avant-garde camera angle. Well, wonderful. Okay, so we need to open this door. Of course he has the safer job of just pressing a switch over here. We, on the other hand, need to get up top, right? Uh, specifically right over on that platform. There are no obvious ways there. However, we see platform on the other end of the room and a rope in between. Oh dear God, we're in for a treat. Push forward. Now press and hold action. When you are hanging from the ledge, hold down crawl to squeeze into the gap. Right, so this is something I mentioned when we were shimming across the very tight crevice. This one is a bit wider, allows us to climb in. So you can, again, press jump and control, or just control forward, but you keep holding control, pressing forward, and nothing happens. This is stupid. Uh, the game should allow Lara to crawl in even without pressing the crawl button, but as it is in Tomb Raider 4, and I'm not entirely sure if they finally improved it in uh, Tomb Raider 5, you also have to press the crawl button, hold the action, and also press forward. Right? I don't know why this could not have been done by Lara automatically, just by pressing forward. I mean, it's a still a legit move. Why do we need to do it with the action? That's what's confusing me. Now, let's say you are crawling, you know, from one end of the crawl space to another, and, oh, you reach the end, you want to climb out, you press action forward, 
you can't climb out like this. In Tomb Raider 5, I know this is finally possible using a really neat move, but in Tomb Raider 4, you actually have to use the tank controls to turn Lara around. Mind you, you cannot roll whilst you're crawling. <laughs> Not sure how that would work. And you have to, you know, hold action and go backwards. It's just annoying. I don't know why. Slows, slows me down a lot. Okay, well, on the PC version at least, I have a bit of a better control scheme than I had on my PS Vita. That was a bit of a nightmare. But yeah, I had to sort of use my index fingers and claw the different parts of the touch screen to make this work. It was an interesting exercise. <laughs> now, how did that help us? Uh, we're on the opposite platform. Well... Swing across to the alcove. Jump from the ledge, then hold down action to grab the vine. To release, let go of action. I was dreading this moment so much, you know, and I often thought, okay, the rope swinging in Tomb Raider 4 is not that bad, you know, people are surely exaggerating. It is atrocious. Even after I've practiced and I consider myself experienced with the game now, I still cannot, for the love of me, figure out with any reliable sense of predictability what's going to happen on the rope. So first of all, let me explain. It's quite far away, about three squares distance. You know what this means. This means a running jump. Again, we'll have to hold the action key to truly grab it. So let's do just that. And there we go. Now, if you let go of action key, Lara will let go of the rope, right? Simple enough, and nothing will happen because we'll just drop into the pool of water. Easy peasy. Now, how are we supposed to reach the other side? First of all, let me explain the controls here. You can tilt Lara to the left and to the right. By the way, it's inverted when you're on a rope. I'm pressing left now, Lara is tilting to the right. I'm pressing right, Lara is tilting to the left. Why? I don't know, it just is, you know? Because it's all good fun to make things annoying. Furthermore, you can also at least go upwards on a rope. Oh my god, it's slow. But thankfully, uh, <laughs> let's actually see how much we can swing it. Whoa, these are some wild swings. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never done this in my life. <laughs> okay, this is good fun. But you can thankfully also go down. Much faster, much better. Now, I said swinging. How do you do it? Using the jump key? No. Jump key does nothing on its own, right? See, I'm pressing jump key. Nothing happens. I'm pressing jump key forward. Lara just goes forward as if I wasn't pressing it at all. Or backwards. You have to use the sprint key to make Lara swing on the rope. And it's not just a simple matter of holding the sprint key. I mean, sure, it works. Look, quite impressive swings. But what helps to make Lara swing even more is that each time you reach an end of a swing, to release and repress it. It kind of feels like dancing a waltz. One, two, three, one, two, three. And this is actually the part of rope swinging I like, you know, releasing and repressing the swing button. It feels a bit more interactive that way. Now, whilst you are holding it, or, in, you know, either by, via repress or holding it the entire time, you can do two things. The thing Von Croy advised for us to do was to release the action key. And there it is. It worked just fine, right? Mind you, if you release the action key, Lara will let go of the rope and pretty much land exactly on the square above which she is. So there is no forward swinging momentum. This is where the jump key comes into play, and I will try and demonstrate in a short while. First of all, l let's open the gate so as to shut him up. There we go. It's actually two of them. Wow, that's that's really evil. Okay. And now, um, let me re-grab the rope. I'm not sure if... Is this a bit of an optical illusion? Do you th do you guys think a running jump will be necessary or... A you know what? I'm gonna try and do a standing jump. I think that should be enough. Whew, okay. If you do uh, too much of a jump, uh, Lara will actually not grab the rope. So, again, even judging the distance towards the rope, it can be quite a challenge and a deathly one at that. Now, again, let's first of all go down, then tilt Lara to the left by holding right. Now press the sprint key, release and repress. Release and repress, release and repress, release and repress. And again, we have the option of uh, letting go of the control key as we're above the final tile and we will land on the other ledge, right? But even better and absolutely essential later in the game is to press the jump key. 
using the jump key, we managed to land one square further than we would using the control key, right? So this is quite an essential because this finally uses the actual momentum of the rope and Lara will not just stupidly vertically drop down, they will, we will actually use that swinging momentum to our advantage. But again, mind you, the jump key does nothing on its own, you have to use it whilst you're swinging holding the sprint key. And that's all there is to ropes. It will be great fun to later on try to re-grab one rope from the other, but that is for another day. First of all, let me again make a swan dive, and I think this distance should allow us to make another kind of roll, and that is rolling during a swan dive. Woohoo! See, Lara made a flip in midair, so if you press the roll key whilst you are doing a swan dive, that's how Lara can show off. It's completely useless, but it's absolutely gorgeous, so it's worth doing in its own way. <laughs> And there we go, we are now facing the end of the level. Now, I'm actually not going to enter, not yet. Unless this will trigger another dialogue? Let me see. I'm not sure now. I'm nervous. Moncroy? Moncroy? Okay. Um, what I'm gonna do... <laughs> yeah, he probably just wants us to go forward, but I don't want to do that. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to reload and show you what will happen if we do find all secrets because we currently only have eight right eight golden skulls so again you can use the uh, f6 key to go into the load game screen or you can just scroll through your inventory and there we are again so why did i do that so let's pick it up and let's listen to von Croy and lara will say now it will be a little bit different so you found the Garden of the Five Towers. Well done, my child. To the right, the path of the heretical. To the left is the root of the virtuous. I'm up for a little heresy. So not a virtuoso anymore. Up for a little heresy. Okay, so now you remember how we went to the right before. Now we are going to the left. Bonkor has to open it using a special switch, and the room where we'll find ourselves will be quite similar to the one we were before, with one teensy tiny minor detail, <laughs> a very vicious one. Now it becomes interesting, yeah? You see now, it is not for the weak of heart. How do you hold up, girl? Oh, I think I could get used to this. Yep, you'd better get used to this, Lara. Uh, this time, uh, failing to use the rope properly can be quite deadly. Now, mind you, we will survive one fall if we mess up, but another one will break Lara's neck. And I'm hoping we will not die in the tutorial level. Ah. Well, anyway, let's have another conversation with an avant-garde camera. Before us requires two people well, this is better. You go up to the alcove above the door. I will activate the switch down here. Ooh. Okay then, yeah, sure, why not? So again, uh, mirroring the uh, room, actually not even mirroring, completely copy-pasting the layout, not being on the other side, we have to reach the crawl space over here. Push forward. Now press and hold action. When you are hanging from the ledge, hold down crawl to squeeze into the gap. Yep, so as he said it, you know, uh, holding action and forward is not enough, we have to hold down crawl to squeeze into the gap. But don't worry, I'm not gonna spend time complaining about it now. It's an old wound that needs to stay buried. Instead, let's give um, rope swinging another go. Again, the stakes are higher, there is no pool of water beneath us to make the drop safe, right? Swing across to the alcove, jump from the ledge, then hold down action to grab the vine. To release, let go of action. Do you now, after my explanation, understand why Von Croy's explanation is completely lacking and useless? There is not a mention of tilting Lara, of moving up and down the rope, of having a better swinging momentum on the end of the rope, and actually, about swinging at all, he doesn't mention this. It's like he wants Lara to fail. It's, uh, yeah, it's not nice. Maybe it's possible to actually grab the rope and release control above the other tile without even having to initiate swinging. Hmm. Should I try that? Yep. And this is what happens if we follow <laughs> Von Croy's instructions. So, yeah, the jumping momentum is not good enough. Well, now you know. So, if we fail 
one more time, Lara's gonna break her neck. It will be interesting to have such a death in the tutorial level. So, oh, it's gonna wound my ego terribly, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, that's what makes this so thrilling. Now, I advise you, you know, before you try to re-grab a rope, just to wait for it to be completely still, because the detection is then all messed up. Thankfully, it took us sweet time to get here, and it's now completely still. So, let's make a running jump. There we go. Now, let's go to the end of the rope. Let's press the sprint key and jump. There we go, see? I think even letting go of control after the initial swing would have been enough, but who wants to risk that? And there we go, path forward is open. Now, I can just safely go down and finish the level, or I can risk it and make... You know, it, it's a badge of Tomb Raider honor to try and make another rope jump. And just like before in the area with the pool, in the path of the virtuous, uh, let's make a standing grabbing jump at Tildara perfectly. Oh, thank goodness for that. Okay, and now we have to swing a bit more to reach it because it's further away from us. Okay, repress, let go, repress, and jump and hold forward. Ooh, there we go. Okay, now how to get down? We can use the crawl space. Oh, I feel like we can make a running jump over the rail here and reach the sliding bit, the ramp over there, and... Yes, be safe. Oh, <laughs> Polara. Okay, now one thing, you might be very off fires if you played, uh, you know, Tomb Raider 2 and 3 especially. Like, whenever there was a fire used just to the effect of making an area more lit up, more bright and warmer, it was such a hazard. Lara would instantly set herself on fire even in her own manner and die. Here, not so much. And the reason is that on a couple of occasions we'll actually be using torches and we'll be playing a lot with fire. It's actually much safer and more um, forgiving in Tomb Raider 4. So just something to keep in mind now, that doesn't mean you should just go and start setting Lara on fire. But again, they were a bit more reasonable this time and every single environmental hint of a fire is not going to kill you automatically. So that's, that's very appreciated. Now, any dialogue? Last thoughts, Moncroy? See, he's not signaling us like in the previous room, he's just going forward. Oh, now he's gonna signal us. Now he's gonna look to the stars. Now he's signaling us. Now he's looking up. Now he's signaling us. Okay, whatever. So, as I promised, I'm, I'm gonna make a save at the end of each level. Let's see the time. Oh, <laughs> 43 minutes and 32 seconds. Well, I guess that's what ultimately happens when I'm <laughs> trying to make a tutorial level <laughs> with commentary. <laughs> Okay, now, uh, the reason I made this save is, of course, to save what the statistics look like at the time of me finishing it. So we have, yeah, 43 minutes, almost 3,000 meters. Uh, we have uh, used zero ammunition, obviously, zero health packs, which is always good. We have found all eight secrets. We have picked up all ten items, and finally we have killed zero out of three enemies. Mind you, the items and enemies, as you can clearly see by the cheap graphics, is an extra statistic I will be including at the end of each level just for a bit of closure and before we finish it just in case you're interested let me explain what the distance traveled actually means so we have 28 29 meters right now if i make a step forward it's 31 if i make another step forward it's 32 this is 33 so what this will be 35 Yes, so it seems it's about 1.3 meters is one step forward. And one step forward is about um, three quarters of a square, something like that. So uh, if we make a step backwards, it's 35, 37, 39, will it be 41? Yes, it's consistent. So a hop backwards is basically one full square. That's the metric you can count on. That means one square is considered two meters. So in case you're interested, you know, and I think this is way more interesting because this is not the real world, it's a virtual world composed out of blocks. If you want to know how many blocks you've traveled as a distance traveled, just uh, divide this by two and you'll know it exactly. So with those closing thoughts, really, thank you guys for <laughs> putting up with such a long tutorial level. I stretched it as I, I didn't expect to stretch it as far as I did, but I hope, you know, it was a useful refresher in terms of controls of Lara. Once we'll uh, see grown-up Lara and find additional equipment, I will, of course, provide such explanation for the new mechanics. And up until then, I hope this was a useful or entertaining tutorial, and, uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next level. Let's not keep Von Croy waiting.